Years ago, I would have said Marvel are perhaps the only ones to trust with their own properties, and lending their favorite toys to the slow friend in class is an almost guaranteed disaster. But seeing as Marvel Studios also rides the short bus, that no longer matters because all the toys have been broken. While Venom Let There Be Disappointment still made money, it underperformed significantly to the point that Last Dance almost didn't happen. And it probably shouldn't have. Venom Last Dance picks up shortly after the events of Let There Be Embarrassment, not with Eddie and Venom first, but rather Null, god of the symbiotes. He's imprisoned in his snot bubble somewhere in space and sends out his xenophages to track down the key to his prison, the Codex. Later in the MCU, hungover and talking about the snap, Eddie and Venom drink at a bar before the spell Doctor Strange cast at the end of No Way Home sent them both back to their own universe. Yeah, if you were hoping for a Spider-Man crossover, that ain't happening. After warping back, they learn Eddie is wanted for the death of Detective Mulligan after the events of Let There Be Humiliation. After leaving a tiny piece of himself behind for a reason that becomes obvious later, Venom and Eddie then track down and chow down on some Mexican Michael Vicks. This draws the attention of the Xenophage that doesn't immediately attack or track the pair. Why? Well, because the movie would have ended in 15 minutes, obviously. Later, riding the outside of a plane on their way back to New York, they transform, and the Xenophage from earlier fucking jumps like lore-accurate LeBron James, intercepting the 747 mid-flight and attacks. And it only stops because it gets sucked into the engine like Syndrome. After escaping, Venom explains to Eddie what the big deal is about why the symbiotes are here on Earth. Null, who the symbiotes defeated and imprisoned long ago, seeks a codex, which is formed whenever a symbiote revives its host, like Venom did Eddie. And when transformed into a symbiote, the Codex becomes visible, sending a signal alerting a xenophage to its exact location like a giant Zerg Nazgul. Meanwhile, in Nevada, Area 51 is being decommissioned, and right next door, like a second Krusty Krab, Area 55 is in full operation, with Project Imperium containing and studying the other symbiotes that crash-landed on Earth. It's here that we find Detective Mulligan alive and bonded with a symbiote. It's it's not Toxin, if you were wondering, because apparently they went through a bad breakup, so another and unnamed symbiote is driving Mulligan this time. And it explains the same basic information that Venom and Eddie did to the military officers here. A short while later, Eddie and Venom are beset upon by Imperium forces the government agency, not the Astartes, for as cool as that would be. And after transforming in this fight, the Xenophage just appears, and again, in the chaos, they slip away. Then they meet a family of hippies who want to see aliens at Area 51 before it's decommissioned, and they were nice enough to drop Eddie off in Las Vegas. It's here that Venom decides to be an idiot and waste time gambling when they cross paths with Miss Chen, and in her suite, Venom transforms and starts dancing with her. Lo and behold, the Xenophage smashes into the place, and oh wow, again, the Imperium knows exactly where they are, and they capture Eddie and Venom just after they manage to trick it into leaving. In the facility, Venom is contained and Eddie is imprisoned, when the leader, Strickland, gets the approval to take authority over the program. And then, in a fit of anger over the loss of his men, Strickland just straight up shoots Eddie to destroy the Codex, but one of the scientists then turns into Venom, saving Eddie, transforming, and instantly summons the Xenophage into the facility. The conclusion is a mess of a battle between the Xenophage, all the different symbiotes, multiple additional Xenophages that only get summoned by the other, which decided to do that now, and ultimately Venom, which sacrifices himself to kill all the Xenophages, saving Eddie and the world in the process. So the movie ends with Null remaining imprisoned, the little piece of Venom I mentioned earlier getting hold of a cockroach, so he's alive anyway, so just more bullshit. Glenn died, but not really, kind of crap, and Eddie returns to New York, cleared of all wrongdoing by the government. If it seems I rushed through the major beats, that's because I did, as there is little to talk about. The narrative is a mashup of several different ideas I'm confident came from multiple scripts. On the one hand, you have the consistent additive elements by the symbiotes, like Null, Xenophages, and the Codex. The back and forth between Eddie and Venom has been downgraded from bickering couple to buddy-buddy superhero travel movie, which could be interesting if anything was actually done with it. And it tries to have the genre standard big blowout features. And all of this is sort of multiplied over a couple times because of the different characters that are introduced, like the pair of doctors, in a time frame that's less than two hours. So what you 
get is a movie that's full of big ideas, but paced like a South Korean falling down a flight of stairs. First few steps are fine, until the shoelaces come undone, one foot falls over the other, and Warriors by Imagine Dragons plays for the next fucking hour until you hit the floor wondering what the fuck just happened. And much of this is because the characters have the intelligence of a plastic bag. Eddie, with no evidence to clear his name, decides returning to New York to clear his name for the death of Detective Mulligan is a good idea. And Venom, how do you make a character like him this dumb? Sure, he gets antsy and is a bit impatient rather than impulsive, but now he's just an engine of the writer's desires. When Eddie's depressive and hungover, eh, fuck it, drink more, who cares? But when they're tracking criminals, he's a silent hunter ready to pounce. And then he learns the Xenophage is here on Earth and he becomes an encyclopedia of knowledge, aware of the extreme threat Null and his creatures possess, until he decides Fuck it, I'm gonna transform and dance with Miss Chen, because otherwise the third act has no catalyst. And none of the other characters help either. Dr. Blonde is given this backstory about her brother being struck by lightning and dying to save her, which never comes into play. Dr. Black has a thing for Christmas. I mean, cool, but why? No clue. Outside of maybe some level of character detail, it has no relevance on the story. Even the hippie family you would think leads to some character refinement, really doesn't. There's a hint of a longing for a family for Eddie, but it's a distant element with no growth since the relationship between him and What's Her Nuts is over. Eddie has no kids, and she ain't even in the movie. Besides that, the family is basically just there so that the dad can blast one of the xenophages with a rocket launcher and run away. Something that literally any other character or extra could have done. And this leads me to the symbiotes and xenophages. I hope you're not too big a fan of the former, because they have about as much impact in the story as protesters at Tiananmen Square. Most aren't even named, so if you're hoping for a big blowout extravaganza akin to the Avengers, j just watch the Avengers again. Not that there's much time to give these characters any development since they're all on screen for less than five minutes before getting mulched by the xenophages anyway. Literally. The xenophages have mouths like the giant shark from James and the Giant Peach, so they go in the front as action figures and then come out the back as slushies. Host and all. I'm not as knowledgeable of the symbiotes as I can be, and until I watched one of the late Comic Storian's videos recently, I didn't even really know about Null. So what's presented in the Venom movies, the symbiotes could leave behind a crusty sock and still regenerate, so watching them be shredded into thousands of pieces shouldn't make a difference at all. Again, I'm sure there's a reason for this not being the case, but what's been shown doesn't match this. And the Xenophages really do mess with the balance of all this. The symbiotes must have merged with Kryptonians to have defeated these things in the past. A single xenophage was enough to kill a small band of symbiotes like an ultralisk does zergling, and it has the ability to pull itself back together after being sucked into a jet engine. Compounding this, the xenophage can emit a high-frequency pulse that disrupts the symbiotes, separating them from their hosts, leaving them vulnerable, and the same sonic blast can travel at faster-than-light speeds, calling to null trapped wherever the hell he is with the other xenophages as backup. And the only reason this unstoppable death machine doesn't immediately end the movie is because the writers probably said, ah, crap, uh, have, have it stalk its prey instead of Blitz attacking Venom when he's in plain sight and with his back turned. And for some reason, his Spidey Sense equivalent isn't active. Even that doesn't make any sense. The Xenophage can see the Codex until the symbiote recesses into a lesser transformation. When this happens, the Codex disappears from its vision. Okay, no problem. If Eddie was hiding amongst a large crowd, but half the time he's standing there alone in front of the Xenophage, and it just has to go full retard with, Which way did he go, George? Which way did he go? Even the action isn't particularly impressive either. The one thing you'd think would be entertaining considering the number of symbiotes introduced? Even unnamed, I could come up with more and better designs than this. I get, there's only so much you can do with symbiotes, as once you've seen Carnage, you've seen just about all they can do with weapons made out of swords and axes and hentai. A pair of green ones, a big gray one, a purple one, a lava one, which would have been really cool until she wasn't, and a two-colorless blue-green 4-4 two-sided Simic giant with trample. All of them, they just do the same thing. They punch a lot and die. It's all pretty underwhelming, and I think that's the best description of the movie. Underwhelming. It tries to tie up a bunch of loose ends, hints at an apocalyptic threat, promises character development, and gives a big send-off for fans to enjoy, but none of these promises are fulfilled in a satisfactory way. Just like Venom Let There Be Inadequacy, Last Dance is a first draft that needed as much counseling as Will and Jada Pinkett Smith's marriage. Anyway, 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.